We want liters so we can convert. We got a thousand milliliters and one liter. We should be able to get a number from that. What number do we get? Divide by 500. We have 3.05 grams per one liter. What units do we want? I'm assuming that number you gave me was right. <laughs> Did you give me a number? No. Anybody know what that mass is? Zero one two two. Really? Okay, I'll trust you. Um, grams per liter. We want molarity. How do we convert to molarity? Molecular weight. So we'll have to bust out our periodic table, figure out the molecular weight of our calcium oxalate. Thank you. That was awesomely fast. We now have a molarity. Someone get me the number on that. I heard a negative six. What was the first part? Okay. This is now a molarity. Okay, that's helpful. Where do we plug that into our ice chart? And this is where we got to be a little bit careful. Let's think about this in the reverse. We take our solid and we add it to water. Right, what's our initial concentration of our calcium ion and our oxalate ion in that case? What was that? Zero. Hasn't had time to dissociate. Then it goes through and dissociates. Okay, so we add some and we'll call this S because I think that's what your textbook uses. Some S amount of that solid. Okay? It dissociates into the ions, right? Which means our products go up by some amount and our reactants go down by some amount. Okay? Our reactant dissolved to what extent? So what we're looking at in that change is how much dissolved in units of molarity. How much was dissolved in that solution? Nine point five three times ten to the minus six moles per liter of calcium oxalate dissolved in that solution, which means our S value is that number. What's the relationship between our S and X? It's exactly one to one. Whatever dissolved of our solid went immediately into our ion. So instead of saying negative x, we can say or saying negative s, we can say that is x. That's how much actually dissolved. Which means we went through and said according to all our math that x equaled our 9.53 times 10 to the minus 6 molar would dissolve in water. What's our KSP? KSP equals calcium ion times our oxalate. What's the calcium ion concentration? 9.53 times 10 to the minus 4. Our oxalate, same thing. Square it. We now have our KSP. Six. I'm going to say that that actually was a six, but I think I wrote. How do you guys all enter the same thing into the calculator and get something different? <laughs> Negative. I mean, I'm not one to talk. I screwed up yesterday pretty thoroughly. You got negative five? Negative five. We're sticking with negative five now.
Okay? We now have the KSP for our compound. Okay? Next problem, since we're really short on time. Now we'll go through and look at the reverse. Assuming the dissociation of silver chromate in water is the only equilibrium to be concerned about. Be a little bit nervous there. Okay, why we evaluate only that equilibrium? Well, water generates what? H plus and OH minus. Both of those ions can potentially react with silver and chromate. If they react with them, what happens to the concentration of those ions? They change. If those change, then what happens to the solubility? It also changes. Okay? So when we go through and solve this, almost all of them will say, assume we're only looking at this. Okay? So we want to assume that that's the case. We want to know the solubility of our silver chromate. Okay? So let's go through and take a look at a nice chart on this. We'll start with our silver chromate, which then is in equilibrium with, assuming it dissolves, two silver. two silver. Cannot stress this enough. Remember, from 151, this is a complex ion. It's not silver two. It's two silver ions per one chromate. Was it just CrO4? Yeah. CrO4 minus two. Okay. We could go through and look again at an ice chart. We've got our initial, our change, and our equilibrium. What would our initial concentration be for our silver and our chromate? Zero. We assume it doesn't dissolve right away. Then what happens? Now the silver chromate starts to dissolve. How much does it dissolve by? Some amount. Some amount is going to dissolve. So we'll call that minus x. Okay. That means our reactant concentrations go up. So they will be positive. How much should they go up? How much should the chromate ion go up? By exactly x. Why exactly x? So one to one ratio, how much does the silver ion go up? 2x because two to one ratio. Here's where your coefficients will bite you. Watch out for them. You need to make sure that they show up in your ice chart. When we go through solve for the equilibrium concentration, what's our equilibrium concentration of silver ion? 2x. So our equilibrium concentration of our chromate. Solve for a KSP. Our KSP equals what? Mm, okay, I'll accept that. 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. I was actually looking for concentrations. Based on our balanced reaction, what does our KSP equal? Uh, I don't want you to substitute yet. Silver ion. Squared. Why must it be squared? Our coefficient says that it must be there, times our chromate ion. Okay. Now that we know what our equilibrium expression looks like, now we can plug in what we know our silver ion concentrations to be. What's our silver ion? 2x. Remember, that number must be squared. Times our chromate, which was x. Okay. When we now go through and solve, we'll get a number for x. Okay? The most important part of that is this quantity, 2x squared. Easiest mistake in the world. Okay? I will notice students go through and solve that to be 2x cubed. Is that right? No, you must square that too. This equals 4x cubed, right? Yeah. Now you can go through and solve for x. What did we say that x was? It's the amount, concentration of our ions that dissolved, but where did they come from? Our solid. The amount of solid that actually dissolved. What did the question ask for? How much solid dissolved? Okay. We can now then determine or convert that back into units 
of whatever the problem asked for. In this case, the problem didn't show any units, which means you can make it whatever units you want. So I'd stick with whatever you got, which would, should be moles per liter. Why moles per liter? Because it's the concentration of our silver chromate. Okay? Because K doesn't have units, we end up sliding in and out with our solubility units, making it pretty much whatever we want. Whenever we solve, uh, we're using molarity for each of those. Okay? This will get you through most of the problems that you would see, uh, at least in the homework to differing extents. Uh, we can look at uh, non-mathematic expressions. We could go through and look at, again at the unequilibrium unconstant. If we're given some random concentrations, do we know we're at equilibrium? No. So what do we do? We technically would set up our equilibrium expression, salt, set it equal to Q, because we don't know if it's Q or K, get a number. Take a look at that number. Compare it to K. If Q is less than K, what does that mean? There's not enough products because Q is too small. Our equilibrium shifts to form products. What does that mean as far as solubility? Did we increase or decrease solubility? Increase. We are going to increase dissolving because we still have space to go because we can shift towards the products. What happens if we go through and we find that Q is bigger than K? Shifts towards the reactants. What are our reactants when we're looking at solubility? What phase? Solid. So if Q is bigger than K, what would we expect to see in the solution? We would expect to see a solid precipitate out. Okay? These relationships, Q being less than K, forming product, Q being greater than K, forming reactant, ridiculously, stupidly easy to get confused. Okay? One of my biggest recommendations that you would do on your exam First thing you do when you get it, Q less than K equals products form. Q greater than K, reactants form. Why should you write that? I'm technically late, so it's okay. Why should you write that down right away? Because you'll probably forget it later on. If you write it down... When you get to a problem where you have to evaluate Q versus K, you flip back to what you wrote down at the very beginning. You don't have to worry about remembering it. Why write it down before you write your name down? How many of you will forget your name in an hour after a test? I've seen it happen before, actually. Okay. A lot fewer of you will forget your name than forgetting this relationship. It's an incredibly important relationship. You need to have it memorized. So write it down as soon as you get your exam in whatever format you want to make sure you understand it. Okay? So if we go to our solubility, there we go. If we shift towards our reactants, we see it precipitate. If we shift towards our products, we see more dissolve. Okay? It's soluble. Okay? I will go through and reevaluate the exam Make sure I'm not testing on anything that I don't think was covered yet. Okay? So you'll be expected to identify if a precipitate forms or does not, and being able to solve for your KSP and being able to solve for the solubility of your compound.